his word to lead us and to guide us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Are, are we good yet? Yeah, baby. Let me know. Bueno. <laughs> bueno. Good? Yeah, love. Okay, so um, amen. Well, tonight is an introduction um, to the Prayer of Jabez series. And so tonight it's not going to be a really long lesson. And so it's kind of an introduction tonight. And then as we uh, proceed forward and we get into the different topics of the prayer, um, there'll be, you know, like the regular full 45-minute lessons. Uh, but tonight we're going to kind of just skim over and, and kind of do an introduction to what we're going to be talking about over uh, the next few weeks. And so if you do have your Bibles tonight, I want you to turn with me to the book of First Chronicles, chapter number 4, verses number 9 and 10. First Chronicles, chapter 4. Verses number 9 and 10. And so a couple of, of things that I want to share with you here tonight, a couple of thoughts. And so uh, never never think that, um, you know, the prayer of Jabez, it came out in the form of a book at one point, And then it was, you know, all along Christian mainstream. And it almost became a topic of people would say, oh, yeah, if you just say this prayer, all these things will happen. And so never never allow it to, to get into your mind that God is some sort of a genie, and as long as I every day come and just repeat this prayer, that everything is just going to kind of work out in a perfect manner. Now, of course, we want to stand on the Word of God. We want to have faith in the Word of God, but never treat it like, okay, I'm going to say this prayer every day, and all of a sudden everything needs to start happening in my life. Because there's been testimonies of things like that where people will come and say, yeah, I started saying this prayer every day, and, and then all of this, you know, happened now all of a sudden. It's not it's not a magic formula that, uh, you know, we're going to go through this series and now, okay, I got the formula down now and now all I got to do is memorize this prayer and repeat it every day and, and life is just going to be so grand and so wonderful and there's going to be no more problems in life, okay? That's not what we're teaching and that's not what we're saying here tonight. But First Chronicles chapter 4, <clears throat> verses number 9 and 10, I'm going to read uh, that portion of scripture, open up in prayer. And then we'll get right into it. And so the Bible says, And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou would bless me indeed and enlarge my coast, and that your hand might be with me, and that you would keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me, and God granted him that which he requested. Let's pray tonight. Father, we thank you tonight for your word. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, God. And we ask that tonight that, God, that you would move in this place, that our ears, our spirit, our heart is open to the word of the Lord tonight, God, that we would grow in knowledge and in understanding in what you are desiring to teach us, Lord. We love you and we give you praise tonight. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, um, Book of Chronicles, of course, found in, in the Old Testament, and it's not one of the most popular books when you look at the Book of Chronicles. Not, not many people, when you say, well, what's your favorite book in the Bible? You know, people like Acts, people like, you know, the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I, I've never really heard anybody say, man, First Chronicles, that's my book. Man, that's my go-to, you know, because... First Chronicles, really, if you think about the book of Chronicles, um, it deals a lot with genealogy. It deals a lot with family lineage and, and, you know, bloodline. That's what Chronicles is about. And so Chronicles is, is written at a time when Israel is coming back out of an exile. So Israel had obtained the blessing of God, and then through much of their rebellion, they are taken into exile. They're taken under under enemy captivity and so when chronicles is written israel is now out of captivity out of exile and they are starting again it is it is the beginning of them rebuilding their nation and so many of us can can relate to that there was a time in our life when we made a mess and and we were we were in exile we were in bondage we were held captive by the enemy and then we come to Christ and now it's the beginning it is the time where now we're beginning to to get our lives back together to begin to rebuild what the enemy has stolen and so that's what chronicles is it's 
It's a book that was written showing the genealogy, kind of bringing to remembrance to Israel. And if you look at Chronicles, the, the very first chapter, it starts with Adam. It starts with the beginning. And it goes on through, and it talks about every generation, and every generation, and the sons, and the daughters, and who was born, and who was birthed. And, and here's the thing that's very interesting about the prayer of Jabez. As you look through the book of Chronicles, it's roughly chapters 1 through 9 where it deals with, with the genealogy. And, and much of it is just, and so-and-so begat so-and-so, and so-and-so -and -so begat so-and-so. And really nowhere in the middle of those pages is it, does it stop to give a summary or to give an explanation of anybody's particular life. But tucked here in the book of Chronicles is, is this man by the name of Jabez and, and his prayer. And so you begin to say, wow, what, what, what's so significant about Jabez? What's so important about Jabez? He's not mentioned very many times in the Word of God. But here in Chronicles, it shares the story of, of this man's prayer, of what he has to say. Look through the book of Chronicles, and, and it's just name after name after name after name. And then it gets to Jabez, and it kind of gives a brief, very small description of who he was, I mean very small description, of who he was and the prayer that he presented before the Lord. And so we read that and we understand that, 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 that it's put, it's placed in there for a purpose. Who is this Jabez guy? Who, who is this man that has this very small summary of who he is tucked in the genealogies of, from creation all the way down this line. It, it talks about David. It talks about King Saul. It, it talks about Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. It, it talks about all of these, these big names in Israel's history. And it doesn't really say anything about them or their exploits or the things they did or why they were giving particular names. But Jabez for some reason, stands out. And it's not so that you and I can read this text and somehow think that, you know, all of our troubles will just be gone if we follow the example prayer of what Jabez says. But there's a couple of things that I want to look at in, in our introduction um, to, to the prayer of Jabez. And the first thing is the distinction of his name. Chapter 4, verse 9 says, And his mother called his name Jabez, <coughs> saying, Because I bore him in pain. And so, if you look at, at the history, um, the biblical history of, of names that were given, Names were given and they meant something. They were given for a purpose. It wasn't like, you know, today's day and age, it, it kind of seems like there's so many different new names out there that people are looking for the most unique name. Oh, look, that would be cool to give them that unique name. What does it mean? I don't know, but it's very unique. Let's name our child that. There's nothing wrong with that. But at, at this time, at this biblical time, when somebody was given a name, it meant something. It, it, it was either prophetically speaking about who would they, they would become or perhaps the attitude of the people during the time that the child was born. And so here we understand that the mother is saying, because I bore him in pain. It wasn't the latest fad. You know, they, they didn't have a book on the most popular baby names of 2022, because that's what they have now. You know, for every year that we are here, you know, in 1992, there was a book, The Most Popular Names of 1992. <laughs> and the most popular names of, you know, and so now, when you look at 2022, 
you're going to find you know the number one most popular name and then it works its way down right and so that's not how they name their kids here in in during this time um it wasn't like okay this is the popular name um, to give and so we know that his mother had named him according to what she seen him as one that was going to bring pain or that was born in pain. Jacob's name means supplanter or one who tricks. And we know that Jacob was one that tricked his brother out of his birthright, right? These are biblical names. Jeremiah means God hurls or God throws. And Jeremiah was thrown as a prophet into a nation of self-righteous people. Jesus' name means God saves. And we know that through his life, death, and resurrection, that that's exactly what he did, is he brought salvation to you and I as mankind. And so Jabez has the distinction of what his name means, which means to grieve or to be sorrowful. So his mother, for whatever reason, has, has stamped him as sorrow, as pain, as trouble. And so maybe perhaps in, in our upbringing, right, based on the culture we were raised in, you know, if, if you weren't raised in a Christian home in people that stand on the biblical truths of what Jesus teaches, then chances are that we've been raised many times by people that, that, that thought they knew the best way to do things. But many times, if we're honest, many of us were raised in abusive homes. Now, our parents may have been doing their best and, and they thought they were doing what was right, but the reality is, is many times we are brought up in abusive homes and we are a product of that environment. Who we are today is a direct result of the environment that we were brought up in. And so perhaps because of the environment, it, it, it puts you in a position where you would act out or you would lash out or you were constantly getting in trouble because many times we are just children maybe looking for attention or or looking for love and if we're not getting the attention and we're not getting the love then we'll find a way to at least get attention by acting up and then people look at us and they label us and they say that kid's trouble you're good for nothing you're just like your father you're just like your mother they have all kinds of different things that they will label you as that they will call you that they will they will say mad and not realizing that the words that they are speaking are actually bringing destruction to your life and so just like in jabez's life he was a child that everywhere he went when they said the name jabez it was a constant reminder that he brought sorrow he brought pain he brought trouble wherever he went that, that that's what that name meant and so i wonder with us growing up you know many times when constantly you know you hear the name being called ah jesse oh jesse jesse again jesse again jesse again <laughs> again 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 and so hearing that name right constantly being yelled at or belittled or torn down and constantly being told can't you ever do anything right now I'm not saying that's what happened in my home to me but perhaps you can relate to that maybe you were finding yourself as a, a very ambitious child <laughs> ambitious uh, just constantly looking uh, for places and things to explore and you were labeled as somebody it was constantly getting in trouble. But as we continue to, to read through these few verses, although he was, he was born and his name was Trouble, listen, listen to, to how this connects with our lives. Listen, listen to, to this biblical narrative. So, so we understand that, that he's born and, and he's labeled as trouble or as sorrow. And everywhere he goes, all the other little kids know that that's what his name means, right? And, 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 and then little kids, they can be brutal. Like me growing up with the name Jesus, every time like they would take role and, in, in school, because I didn't grow up in a predominantly you know, Hispanic neighborhood, 
And so, you know, they would say Jesus, and I'd be like, oh, man, this is embarrassing, you know. Jesse, <laughs> my name is Jesus. And so they would say Jesus, and I'd be like, here, you know, like, like because all the other kids, that, that wasn't the normal name. That wasn't Nick. That wasn't Mike. That wasn't Scott. That wasn't Larry. You know, that wasn't Steve. That wasn't your normal names. I was the Jesus. And so now, you know, I'm teased as Jesus, 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 right? And so, so in, in Jabez's life, growing up, he's known as sorrow. He's known as trouble. But, but, but something shifts in this man's life. And, and, and it's interesting because it's something that we can relate to. Because I don't know what your upbringing was like. I don't know if you were in trouble. I don't know if you got pregnant early. I don't know if you got somebody pregnant early. I don't know what your situation was, but all of those things labeled you according to maybe family members. And, and family members were looking and they were judging and saying, oh yeah, did you hear about this? Or did you hear about that? And so they, they, they put a jacket on you. They, they look down at you. And so just like in Jabez as being one that was sorrowful, but then something shifts, something changes because the Bible says in verse 9, now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. So that, that's good news because it, it doesn't matter how things started in life. It, it doesn't matter how the, that, that, that culture and that environment that may have been verbally abusive or physically abusive or emotionally abusive to you. And, and, and during that time that was so important, and here's what's so difficult about that, is, is during those young years is when we are influenced the most. It's during them, them childhood years at 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and on into our teen years where we are being developed, our character is being developed, and many times when we're in the wrong environment, it is being developed in a negative way. But there, there is good news for you and I here tonight, because although Jabez could have been walking around and he was known as sorrowful, at some point, something shifted in his life that the Bible says that he became more honorable than his own brothers. And so maybe, you know, in your family, you were the black sheep. Maybe you were the trouble victor. Maybe you were the problem child. But look at you now. Look at you now, standing honorable in the presence of God. I'm not saying you're perfect. You know, Salandez just came up and gave a very clear description of what reality is. Nobody's talking about perfection. Or we're talking about people that are saying, man, I'm striving. Man, I'm reading the Word. I'm trying my best to live according to the Word of God. I am laying down my life and my will to Jesus Christ. I'm committing my life. I'm surrendering myself to the kingdom of heaven. And so he was more honorable than his brothers. Jabez, all of a sudden now, would find a shift in who he was. And that's the good news for us tonight, is that we're not who we used to be. We're not what we used to be. We may not be where our husband or wife may want us to be, right? Because your wife wants you to be this and your husband wants you to be this, you know. And that's good, high expectations. You, you may not be what they want you to be yet. But thank God, you ain't what you used to be anymore. Yeah. Right? We, we, we are a work in progress. Thank God that you're not married to what you were married to three, four, five years ago. Thank God there's been a change. Thank, thank, thank God there's something happening on the inside that now we are men and women that are more honorable than those that don't know Jesus Christ. What made the difference in Jabez's life is that he was a man of prayer. You know that it is, it is prayer that changes everything. See, I, I believe if, if Jabez, see, he's, he's set aside, he's, he's spoken of here in these very few verses, but, but 
if if he wasn't praying, if he wasn't speaking, if he wasn't voicing, if he wasn't calling out to God, then I believe that he would have continued on and he would have been sorrow. He would have been trouble. And so in, in our life too is that if we don't develop this, this prayer life, and, and we'll very briefly kind of read over it, and then later on in the weeks coming, we'll break down the verses. But if he wasn't developing and, and saying, God, this is what I want. I want to pursue you. I want to be pleasing in your sight. See, it's when we live that life that a transformation begins to happen in our heart and in our life. Don't you think for one minute that you can go on and be a good man or woman of God without allowing, allowing God to develop that in your life? You can't change on your own. Stop trying to change on your own. You don't have the ability to deliver yourself. You don't have the ability to set yourself free. You will stay in bondage. You will stay controlled by the enemy unless you can learn to release and say, God, it has to be you. It has to be you. See, I've tried on my own. You've tried on your own. I've tried to get things out of my life in the past. And all it did was hold me to bondage more and more. All of my good intentions, all of my good ideas, all of my times of saying, okay, I'm never going to get high again. I don't want to get high again. No matter how much I said, I don't want to do this anymore. In that moment, maybe for that next you know, hour and a half, uh, man, I meant business. Man, I'm really stopping this time. Only to be led away by my own desires and then once again falling myself right back in that place. But when men and women submit and surrender, you know, I, I, I don't remember the last time I shared this or if I shared it at the men's prayer, but you know what, what, what restores marriages is when people are in prayer to God and the husband and the wife are both submitted. <laughs> because at the end of the day, I mean, you can argue all you want, but, but when you say, okay, what does God say about it? When you're surrendered, you'll say that. What does God say about this situation? When you're not surrendered, I don't care. I don't want to hear it. And you'll go and you'll do your own thing and you'll fight and you'll, and, and you'll have a big old fuss. But when men and women are surrendered, when we are men and women of prayer that are saying, God, I need your leading. I need your guidance. I need your direction in my life. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez because she had bore him in sorrow. What a transition. He was born sorrow. But as he grew and developed and he began to voice his need to the Lord, the Bible says he became honorable. And Jabez called on the God of Israel saying, oh, there's the key right there. Calling on the God of Israel. And so don't neglect the importance of calling on the Lord every day. Of calling on God and, and saying, God, I, I, I need your direction. God, I need to hear from you. I, 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 I'm about to enter into my day today and 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 know this that, that the minute that you wake up in the morning warfare is standing waiting for you Amen. that spiritual warfare it doesn't even wait for you to get out the door as soon as you wake up spiritual warfare is knocking on the door of your heart and so here Jabez called on the God of Israel and so you want to know what shifted him from troublesome youth to honorable man. What, what separates you from the world? What separates you from society? If society doesn't call on the Lord, they don't, they don't ask God, God direct me, God help me, God show me, God teach me to love my wife, God teach me to be a better father, God, teach me to be a better mother. Teach me to, to love, to have the right relationships. God, I need your help. Because understand that, that your environment, 
your environment, how you grew up, how you were raised. Sometimes naturally that's the way that your life wants to raise now the next generation. And it was messed up. It was messed up. I can even, I can even speak to that, and I'm, I'm closing in the next few minutes, but listen to what I'm going to say here. Because of the way that, that, that I was raised and the, the things that I thought were the right way to raise kids, even though I was in church and, and serving the Lord, committed to God, but I was, I was very legalistic in that approach. And so I was very stern. I was very black and white. Uh, I was very militant in, in the way that I wanted to, to, to raise my kids. Instead of going to the Word of God and perhaps having a little bit more love and a little bit more compassion. And so that's the importance of being men and women that are saying, you know, God, this is all new territory to me. I've never been in this situation that I'm in. See, some of us, you know, uh, you guys are going to be, you know, new parents. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, after, you know, some people get married after they've been through some bad relationships. And so now you're in this situation and you're like, okay, God, I've, I've never been in this situation before. And so I know the way I did it before. I know how I did it last time. And, and, and the last time, the way I did it before, it was a product of my environment. It was, it was a product of the character that was developed in me because of the environment that I grew up in. And so, God, I don't know what to do here. And when you can come to the Lord and say, God, I don't know what to do here. And you say, I'm calling on the God of Israel. Oh, that you would bless me indeed, that you would enlarge my coast, and that your hand might be with me, that you would keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And the Bible says this, and, and God granted him that which he requested. That's what separated this man here. Later on, read Chronicles. You're going to find a whole lot of, you're going to get bored with it. You're going to go, yeah, come on. Some of these things I can't even pronounce. But look how tucked away in there, there's this, this little golden nugget of truth. This little nugget of truth. And so as we opened up tonight with this introduction to the prayer of Jabez, and then as the weeks move along, we'll, we'll, we'll get into uh, the prayer. We'll break it down verse by verse and spend some time on it. But tonight, know this, that we've laid the foundation to understand who was this man and what are the importance of, of what he's teaching. We, we, we've laid the groundwork, you know, perhaps to say, man, we used to be sorrow. We used to be trouble. You know, when we showed up, people were like, oh, man, don't buy no more beer. You know how they get. <laughs> don't get high with him. You know he's going to start fighting with everybody. Whatever it was, right? That, that, that was the world that we lived in. Man, he's a violent drunk. But here we are. Now we're honorable. We're no longer what we used to be. Amen? Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. <laughs> Amen. Like I shared with you earlier, this the introduction wasn't uh, wasn't a real long, you know, 45 minute message. It was just kind of bringing us as a, into an intro. Um, to what we're going to prepare for over the next few weeks. And so, as always, um, as a minister of the gospel, we always have to give an opportunity um, to people that may not be born again, to people that may not have ever accepted Jesus Christ um, as their Lord and Savior. And so tonight, I want to do that. Um, that's, that's kind of um, the first step. You know, uh, the Bible is very clear that um, if you don't know God, if, if, if He is not Lord of your life, and you pray, it says that it's like your prayers hit the ceiling and they go nowhere. They go nowhere. But when you say, God, you're my Father, I'm, I'm surrendered to you. And, and a sinner's prayer isn't a specific prayer. You have to say this or you're not saved. No, it's just simply following the outline of saying, Jesus, I believe you're Lord. I believe you died on the cross. I believe you rose on the third day. You know, I, I surrender to you. However, however, you want to uh, accept the Lord, it's, it's not a, a specific prayer. You have to say it like this. And so tonight, I want to give that opportunity 
to those that are here tonight, those that are watching on live stream. Um, you know, perhaps you've, you've stumbled upon us. Um, maybe you're a family member of mine and you, you saw our Facebook page and then you, you got curious as to, man, what's, what's my cousin doing? Man, he's up there doing what with the Bible? And I remember who he was. And so tonight we want to give that opportunity. Maybe uh, you're not a born again believer. Maybe Jesus Christ isn't Lord of your life and you want to make that commitment tonight. That is, that is the first step. That is step number one. And so anybody in this place tonight, Jesus Christ isn't Lord of your life and you want to make that decision, just lift him up with your hand. Amen. We'd be more than happy to lead you to the Lord tonight. Maybe perhaps you're watching us online as well. And so tonight I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And, um, and it's, it's not the words of the prayer that save you. It's not just, you know, you know, let me just repeat this, okay, and get it over with. It's actually confessing with your mouth what you are believing in your heart. That is the prayer of salvation. It's, it's truly coming to that place where God's drawing you and you're saying, that's me. I want to make that decision. And so tonight, I want you to just repeat this with me. I want you to say, Father, I come before you tonight and I recognize that I am a sinner and I recognize that I am in need of a Savior. And so I believe that, that, that you were sent uh, as God's only begotten Son, Jesus. And that you paid the penalty of sin for my life. That you hung on the cross. You were crucified. You were sacrificed in my place. And I believe that the blood that you shed has washed away my sins. I accept. I I receive you tonight as my Lord and as my Savior. And so I ask you now that you would fill me with your Holy Spirit, that, that your Spirit would live in me, that you would lead me, that you would guide me, and that you would direct my path. And I ask this tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Amen. Amen. So tonight we're gonna we'll close in a word of prayer um, as like I said, this was just kind of an introduction. Um, book of Chronicles, again, not the most um, sought-after book in the Old Testament, uh, but but there are some powerful things in it. And it's pretty amazing, the genealogy, right? That we can be traced all the way back to creation. And you look through it, you look, you look through the records that have been kept, right? It's pretty awesome, pretty amazing. So don't just throw it out as if it's insignificant. There is extreme significance in the genealogy, taking us all the way back to the first man, Adam. So, Father, we love you tonight, and we thank you um, for just preparing our hearts and bringing us into this place of, of an introduction um, into the prayer of Jabez. We we realize tonight, as, as born-again believers, that it's not just a simple prayer that if we say it every morning, uh, that now life will suddenly, you know, become... Uh, just victorious in every way that we will never have problems anymore. But we understand that it is an outline, it is a trust, it is a belief. It is us having faith, God, that you are able, that you truly want to bless us, that you want to extend our influence, Lord God, that you want to protect us, God, and keep us from evil, Lord God. We understand that this prayer is actually your will for our life. And so, Lord, we just ask you to help us over these next few weeks as we dedicate our heart to the study of the prayer that this man made towards you, Lord. We love you and we honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Come on.